Hey, what's up everybody? I'm John Turner and welcome back to Woods to Table. Today, I'm a little bit disappointed and a whole lot of excited. Disappointed because turkey season's over and that means we're kind of in that in-between phase where there's nothing in season between us and deer season. So we'll be out there planting food pots and scouting and that's exciting, but not nearly as exciting as you know, turning our attention over to fishing. We've got some great fishing trips and some great videos planned for you guys, freshwater and saltwater, and some even better hunts planned for this fall. You're not gonna wanna miss it, so stick around. We're wrapping up hunting season. We wanted to just address some of the questions and comments that we've gotten, um, direct messages on our Instagram about equipment and techniques that we featured in our videos. We don't do a lot of that on this channel. Um, we usually do all the catch clean cooks. I'm um, just showing you guys our experiences. We learn and grow as hunters, fishermen, outdoorsmen. Uh, and even in the kitchen. Uh, but we do want to address some of those questions because me and uh, Ryan and Sammy and Afton, all of us being uh, new hunters, uh, we believe that these pieces of equipment which match our sort of hunting philosophy um, and our style have really contributed to our early success. And so we're going to demo those for you and just tell, tell you some of our likes and dislikes. Uh, today we're going to start with the ATN Excite 4K Pro that we've used on a couple of crossbows and a rifle to this point. We've taken almost 300 shots with it and have not been disappointed. So we'll tell you all the features uh, and just tell you about our experience with it. Hope you guys find it useful. Stick around. All right, so let's go ahead, get this thing out of the box and show you just how it comes straight from the manufacturer and show you some of the features here. Um, so we start with, this is the scope itself, the Excite 4K Pro. It comes with a really nice neoprene uh, case that can fit over the top of the scope. Uh, an eyepiece and a sunshade for really, really bright days. Um, found the sunshade to be helpful. The eyepiece just makes the unit overall too long. It comes with an IR illuminator if you're purchasing something in the Pro Series, though the specifications, the box, and even the um, illuminator itself doesn't list the number of lumens, which I find kind of strange. Um, still, it seems to do a good job. Scope comes with a set of three 30 millimeter scope rings. Um, including standard and one L-shaped scope ring if you need it. Uh, it also has a set of two Picatinny rail mounts, one on each side of the standard scope rings, uh, which I find really helpful to mount a GoPro and the IR Illuminator um, to the uh, sides of the scope. So we're gonna go ahead and get this thing installed on Ryan's crossbow. And then we'll talk you through some of the other features and the use of the unit. All right, so we've got this thing mounted on Ryan's crossbow. And I'm just gonna run through a quick list of pros and cons, just telling you about our experience with this uh, on a variety of platforms. This crossbow, my crossbow, my AR-15, about 300 shots combined across those platforms uh, and have had great results uh, on each. Uh, first and foremost, it does what it's supposed to do, right? Night vision, image quality is very good. The infrared illuminator that's included with it does a good job. Uh, it doesn't, the manufacturer doesn't list how many lumens this actually provides but I've had no issue with it just lighting up the night out to 50 or 100 yards. Beyond that, uh, I don't have any experience with it. I haven't tested it out that far, but please with it within that range. This gives you the ability to hunt with stealth. And I mentioned that everything that we're gonna review kind of fits with our hunting philosophy, which is to be as non-invasive as you can on the game that you're hunting, on the land that you're hunting. And we used to use a lot of these motion activated lights that go underneath your feeders and these green lights that go on top of your scopes and had some good results. Um, and uh, a lot of people say, well, you know, they get used to it. Well, that may be true, right? They may get used to the green light coming on, but they may also get used to every time a green light comes on, somebody shooting at them. Um, so if they can remember one, they can remember the other. Um, but even though the green lights are not supposed to spook game uh, as much as a white light, um, we certainly had that experience and it only took twice before we went and made this investment. Uh, and it certainly has worked out. Secondarily, it's very accurate. We've not had any issues with it. Um, you know, once you zero it in for a particular platform, uh, not had any issues with it holding zero. Um, audio video quality in it is very good. It'll take uh, 1080p uh, video up to 120 frames per second. And actually surprisingly good audio considering that you can't put an external microphone on it. Um, it'll capture me whispering in the tree stand to whoever I'm sitting there with. Uh, and you've probably seen that in some of our videos. Another feature that we really like is the battery life. Um, the Excite 4K Pro, as opposed to like the Excite 2, has a built-in lithium ion battery. Um, manufacturer says that it'll last for up to 18 hours on one charge. I actually think that's pretty close to accurate, at least for a newer unit. And this one's um, not very old. I've been able to take it out on multiple hunts on one charge and had no issues with it whatsoever. So battery life, definitely a plus. 
the one shot zero feature that they have in the software is actually quite good. I won't say that it really is one shot in order to zero it, but it really does cut down on the time that you spend and the cost of the ammunition that you're gonna use. Um, the ballistic calculator, um, where you can adjust based on the ballistics and the environmental variables, um, the conditions of the day in order to recalculate uh, based on range, uh, humidity, wind direction, wind speed, um, it'll move those crosshairs for you and it's surprisingly accurate when that happens. Uh, my favorite feature though is really uh, the app and the video streaming capabilities uh, from the scope to the app and I'll get to that uh, more in just a second. Um, when we, well, I'll just walk you through the app and, and kind of show you on my phone exactly what that looks like. Um, cost, I don't know if I'd call this a, a positive or a negative, a pro or a con. Um, it, I guess it really depends on your budget, right? Um, if you're budget constrained, then the green lights actually do work quite, quite well. Um, if you're you know, in kind of the mid-range and you want to get into night vision, this is a, a cost-effective cost option. It retails for $699, um, but certainly not the most expensive option that's on the market. Right? There are other options that are out there um, if you want to get something that's you know, higher definition or better IR illuminators, etc. Right? So there are other options. As far as cons, um, the size is one. It weighs over two pounds. It is not lightweight. It's a little bit bulky. Uh, and can be a little bit cumbersome you know, if you're carrying it a long way through the woods uh, or if a smaller hunter, a smaller framed hunter is carrying it, um, it can get a little bit heavy. Um, the range finder, uh, this part of the software is a little bit clunky. You can get kind of an add-on range finder that's like a, a one click and it works with Bluetooth, syncs to the scope. Um, but just using the built-in range finder I found to be a little bit time consuming if you're in a real hunting situation than trying to measure the height of the game that you know that has just walked into the field or whatever to adjust the range is it just takes too long um, the recoil uh, associated with uh, you know most of the platforms you're going to use um, will actually eject the video card it'll kick this little rubber um, cap off of the memory card slot and can eject the memory card out and you, it'll happen without you knowing it so you may not actually get video of your hunts another thing that I've had happen to me before um, and there's a minimum uh, feet per second of uh, 328 feet per second that this thing can accommodate um, and I'll talk to you a little bit more about that when we're going through the app so let's go ahead and jump into that let me show you that software again most of the cons that I mentioned I mean these are kind of nitpicky little things um, that I can tolerate for all the pros pros outweigh the cons tremendously considering the price of this unit but let me jump in and show you the app one of the features that I like the most which is that video streaming capability Okay, so the folks at ATN have made it really, really easy for you to control some, at least the basic functionality of your scope from within the app, rather than having to go through the much larger uh, comprehensive menu in the scope itself. In order to do that, you're just gonna come into, on either your uh, iPhone or your Android, uh, come into your Wi-Fi settings, make sure that you've picked and connected to the Xsite underscore whatever, whatever uh, Wi-Fi network. And that's gonna be streaming from the scope itself. And once you've done that, you can come into the Obsidian 4 app, connect to your device, select the device name, and it brings you into what's, in my opinion, a pretty user-friendly, pretty basic uh, menu. Starting first with the system menu, if you click on that, it gives you the ability to turn on and off your night vision, and as I'm doing this, I can hear it turning on and off in the scope. Uh, adjust your light sensitivity, adjust all your photo and video settings, and this is pretty helpful because um, you can change uh, the feet per second that you're recording uh, each of your videos, it goes up as high as 120 frames per second, uh, which is really helpful and it gives you a really cool effect if you want to do some sort of tracer shots, if you're crossbow hunting and you have a Luminoc and you want to go back and watch the video and see exactly what your shot placement was, um, it's really helpful to do that as well. And it gives you the ability to adjust a number of other features in here. Screen brightness is another one that I use all the time. Um, a number of others that you really don't have to adjust very often. Um, even the factory settings are probably fine. A number of these I've never changed a single time in the time that I've had this scope. You do want to adjust um, your date and time, for instance, uh, so that that's set correctly. Um, once you purchase the scope, one of the first things you're going to want to set is the device type and whether you bought the 3 to 14 zoom or the 5 to 20 zoom. Go ahead and set that once and you never have to touch it again. So a lot of these are just features you don't have to worry about. Some things that you may want to update while you're using the scope, um, you know, from hunt to hunt is uh, your environment variables. If you're using the ballistic calculator, if you're using the range finder in order to adjust the distance of your shots, 
Uh, you can come in here and change your humidity, wind speed, wind direction, and it's a heck of a lot easier than doing it through the scope where you just have to use those buttons on top and click, 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 you know, one unit per time. Um, you can change your profiles uh, quickly within uh, this section of the menu. And I'll just spend a minute here because it's worth mentioning. Um, you'll see that I have a number of profiles saved here. I have one for my crossbow. I have one for uh, Ryan's, or excuse me, one for my AR-15, and then a number of profiles, three exactly, for Ryan's crossbow. The reason that I have those set up this way is because um, Ryan's crossbow is a 10-point Wicked Ridge Ranger X2 crossbow. Uh, it's a youth model. Um, it's not a toy by any means. Uh, it shoots, you know, according to the manufacturer specifications, they say that it shoots 300 feet per second. Like a lot of other crossbows out there, older crossbows or recurve crossbows, you may not be able to get um, more than 328 feet per second out of it. The reason that that number is important is that you see I've got all of my um, sort of ballistic variables input here. Uh, and for the muzzle velocity, it says 328. The reason for that is there is a lower bound or a, um, a minimum number that this firmware can actually handle within the scope. Because if I come in and try to input 300 feet per, per second for Ryan's crossbow and hit apply, it immediately goes back to 328. That immediately tells me that uh, the minimum capability of this so software is 328 feet per second. It's almost 10% different than the maximum speed of Ryan's crossbow. And so if I was to try to use the ballistic calculator and adjust the range that he's shooting, uh, it's not gonna work properly, right? It's gonna think that bolt's traveling faster than it is. It's not gonna calculate the drop correctly. And so to compensate for that, I come in and make a profile for every distance that I know he is expected to shoot. So we have tree stands that are set up over, you know, when we're hunting hogs, we're set up over feeders at 20, 25, and 30 yards. So I can come in and just say, today we're hunting at the 25 yard feeder. I've zeroed it in at exactly that distance. Uh, and I know that, that is, uh, that's gonna be perfect and I don't have to adjust the range, I just adjust the profile instead. So it's a little workaround that I came up with. It takes longer to zero it in, uh, but it seems to work pretty well. So one of my favorite features about the app and the scope itself is this viewfinder feature. And as you look through here, you can see whatever that scope is looking at or the person holding that scope is looking at. In this case, you can see me sitting out there. Hi, everybody. And this is really, really helpful for me um, when I'm hunting with Ryan or a less experienced hunter. I can see exactly what they're aiming at. I can coach them through it, a little higher, a little lower, further back, whatever it is, uh, to make sure that they're positioned to make a really clean and ethical shot. And it's more fun for them too, to make sure that they have a successful hunt. You don't want to go to all that trouble uh, and then get right down to sort of the moment of truth and, uh, and then make a bad shot, right? And we do practice extensively before we go out into the field, but it really is helpful to be able to talk them through it, keep them calm and help to calm their nerves. You can adjust uh, the zoom on the scope while you're within this view. You see the number on the, the side next to the magnifying glass changing as I'm hitting these buttons uh, on the side. So this works really well. Again, one of my favorite, favorite features about the scope. And you can still run the viewfinder while you're capturing uh, video, right? So I can be recording uh, or the shooter can be recording at the same time as you're capturing or you're, you're streaming that to the viewfinder and I'm still talking them through it. So you can do both at once, it's great. Um, you can come into the gallery and view photos and videos that you took on the scope. And um, I don't have a lot of success streaming from the scope uh, in this device menu uh, to the application itself, but it does give you the option to download to your phone just the click of a button. And once you do that, uh, you can view these uh, seamlessly. So every feature within the application I like really well. Again, the only real limitation that I've found is not the app itself on the iPhone, it's more uh, the firmware within the scope and that uh, minimum FPS rating. But everything else works well, and this makes it a lot easier to use. It, it gives me the ability to use this scope on um, you know, the different applications and with different, uh, potentially uh, for different hunters that I might have otherwise. So absolutely love using the scope for this purpose. That's about all I can say about all these features. What really matters about a scope is how it performs when you put it out in the field. I guess this thing does okay.
that's it for us you guys i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you found it useful this is the first in what's going to be a five-part series where we're going to go through some other pieces of equipment that we found absolutely essential and have really helped us to become better hunters in a very short period of time so stay tuned for those it's very important that you don't just rush out and buy every piece of equipment that hits the market or be looking for the next new thing because you can spend a lot of money you can waste a lot of money that way so we're going to show you the things that match again our philosophy that we've had good success with and hope you guys enjoy it stick around